<laughs> Two, Two gays watch Drag Race. Drag Race. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Two Gays Watch Drag Race. I'm the first of the two gays in question, Aaron Holman. And my other fabulous gay host today is actually Drag Race UK royalty, Vinegar Strokes. Hello, I'm gay and I'm watching Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it takes to be here. Um, <laughs> it really is. We it's, are it's so the, thrilled. Oh, thank you so much. This was like the easiest way to be gay these days. I mean, normally you gotta have a six pack and you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a beard. I don't have either. So I'm just like, great. If I can just watch Drag Race and be gay, I, I feel great. I go into it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It is giving me something wonderful to focus on during these crazy, uncertain times that we're living in. I mean, you know, I, I, I know, right? I mean, I thought we, we had it bad over here, but I, I've been watching Twitter and BBC News. I'm like, do you know what? I can't even, can't, I mean, people storming, what was it? What was it? What, what do you call it again? The, the storming our Capitol building, yeah. Storming the Capitol was like, was, was, it was almost like a drag race, um, you know, design challenge. <laughs> Run and grab your, <laughs> grab your materials and make something. Um, or, but, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was absolutely crazy. So I feel for you guys out there watching this um so this soap opera called America. So <laughs> yeah, you know what I I just I'm not nuts about <clears throat> the finale. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, I'm no, I'm kind of nuts about the finale because we already know that the gorgeous Kamal is going to come in, and also uh, and also Joe. So I feel yeah. like we I feel like we, we've got we've got the spoiler, and we like the spoiler, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next season looks like it's going to be much better. Mm. Now. Speaking of seasons, we have arrived at UK season two of Drag Race. How do you feel about it, Vinegar? I am, I, Joe. You know what, I'm so excited about it. I've got two of my bestest friends on the show, which we'll come to later, who they are and that yeah. kind of stuff. But um, <laughs> it's great. I mean, it's great that it's finally happened because obviously when they were filming, they had to stop filming because of COVID. So they mm -hmm. had like, what six six or seven months yeah, of out, of, seven. out of filming you know we're kind of like fretting about what's going to happen so it's just great to actually see the show and see what's happening i'm excited to see how how, how it goes from like you know co covid bc to covid ad whatever whatever the religious yeah. things are but you know what i mean i'm excited to see yep. how it's gonna look <laughs> Oh, me too. And it is going to drastically just switch, you know, one of those episodes. Yeah. I'm sure that they're going to, I mean, I feel like they're going to have to say something, but I mean, maybe not. It could be a challenge. Come as, come as your favorite COVID. Uh, who knows? Come at, Come as your favorite pandemic. I will. I'll. Co I'll come as the essential flu. worker realness. Yeah, front <laughs> frontline realness. Um, do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, that would actually be a hilarious. I would absolutely. Would not be that. Cam. Would not be it Cam. Be. <laughs> <laughs> well, something that we like to do at the start of each uh, Two Gays Watch episode, we like to check in emotionally with the panel, and the way that we like to do it is we like to describe: Were you in the top? middle or the bottom this week emotionally and just sort of a check-in and see how you're doing now mm. for me myself um this week i'm i'm just a nice safe um yeah nice I safe. Had, yeah i was very busy last week just moved into a new house with my partner and Bob. truly resting for the first time it, when it feels like months so oh, i'm good. definitely safe Good. I'm feeling like a verse top at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I'm feeling very good, although things could be better. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just going to like see my friends because we're, we're in a lockdown at the moment. Like we can't go out anywhere at the moment. So I'm verse top. I'm I'm plodding along and feeling good, good with myself and being creative and whatnot. But um, you know, the verse part needs need it's a good seeing too, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm feeling. This is this, this is emotions, not sex, right? This is what we're talking about. All right. Listen, whichever way that it goes, <laughs> that's what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is emotionally, but mm, who cares? Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right. So I think let's go ahead and dive into episode one of uh, UK season two. We're going to start by 
Yeah, we're gonna start by checking out the entrance looks. So I am gonna go ahead and start just sharing. I'm gonna mute the audio. Don't want to get in trouble. We're not okay. trying to steal yeah. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not gonna make a single. Don't worry. We're not gonna remix it. It's all good. <laughs> and it's like, let's see. All right, our very first entrance, uh, we have Lawrence Cheney walking into the workroom. Lawrence Cheney from Scotland, <laughs> Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, um, well, go I, I, do, 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 I, do, do I have to give my views on this? Yeah, to, absolutely. Yeah, Talk I, about I, it. What do you think? I absolutely love this. I mean, I love a co-ord and she's a curvy girl. It's good to see a curvy girl walk into the workroom and just be gorgeous and really own it and really kind of selling it and it looking yeah. polished. Uh, she looks great. She's polished. I feel like my nan would wear this to, to, to the supermarket. Um, I just love it. I absolutely love it. So yeah, I think it's Cheney. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Great fabric, great hair, great makeup. Everything's spot on. It's absolutely spot on. The poodle moment on the top there, uh, I, mm. I really, really enjoyed. Um, it, go ahead. I have to say, it, it just gives it that little level of camp, doesn't it? It just makes it go, okay, this is not, this is fashionable and trendy, but also, oh, it's camp as well. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. great. And out of their own mouth, they have described their drag. They are the Susan Boyle of drag. <laughs> and I just- all the way. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Susan Boyle is a treasure. And I can already tell Lawrence Cheney is, um, well, a queen to be watching for. It's somebody that I'd known about before. And I'm just so excited to see. I'm so excited to see them on this series. Same. Up next, after Lawrence, we have Miss Cherry Valentine walking in. <laughs> now, what's so hilarious about this entrance look, the first time they walked in, they didn't quite get it right. They definitely nope. bumped that hat off. What do you I think, man? Fail. Oh, I love, do you know what? I love the fact that, I love this show for the fact that people come on and like, right, I'm ready. I've just spent four hours getting ready to look gorgeous. And then something <laughs> funny, like a hat falling off, just makes you go, Oh, okay. She's human. She's not a monster. She's she, she's human because you know sometimes if if you're too perfect, it's a bit it puts a bit of a distance between it puts that two meters between you and your audience. I think yeah. so. The fact that happened just just it just softened her straight away. I absolutely love this look. I love I love the fact that it's black and these kind of gushes of like red glitter, sequin blood, and you know it, it mm -hmm. gave me goth camp. It just gave me like it gave me a bit of Spain as well. I felt I felt like I, yes. I was about to go to Bas Barcelona another, another Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Her face is absolutely gorgeous. But do you know what I also love is that you can just tell that she's just so excited to be there as well, which I absolutely. really like. Really like. One of my favorite things that I noticed from Cherry Valentine, straight off, uh, the first time they cut away, we got a clip of this wonderful laugh. Like you were saying, mm. we can absolutely tell that this queen is beaming to be there. Mm. Uh, and I think that that speaks a lot. The joy of drag is just oozing from Cherry. And I-, I Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot, I mean, it's great for me because I I, I don't know Cherry. Like, I've never met Cherry, never worked with her. So this mm -hmm. is my first exposure to Cherry, which, which is quite refreshing because I know half the queens on this on this season. So to, so to see someone who I don't know, have never met and be like, oh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing your journey. And already I'm, I'm finding myself, I'm rooting for her just because she's just so sweet so yeah yeah she, an absolutely infectious personality and i know that they're going to use that laugh track <laughs> absolutely oh my god bring on the merch the laughing yeah. merch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this glamour sort of gothic club kid thing that I'm getting, I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see more of their runways because they seem like somebody yes. who truly cares about the appearance. Yes, absolutely. And next up, we have one of the friends that you were mentioning, I do believe. We have Miss Tia Coffee. My mate, Tia Coffee. <laughs> My mate Tia Coffee, she's legit like one of my 
nearest to dearest, closest, closest mates. Do you know what I mean? We we are like the black Trixie and Katia of the UK, oh, I'd say. I love like, it. Like like she's like she's brilliant. I absolutely love her. Now this look. <laughs> now I know <laughs> Tia very well. And this is this is quite this is quite a market for Tia, actually. Like she's really like, yeah, okay. I because Tia's all about the performance. Tia is a performer, 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 okay? And she's sick. She can act, she can sing, she, she's she, she oh my god, she can roast. Like, if there's a roast challenge, everyone needs to watch out because this bitch will roast their head. And it's, and it's funny. It's clever roasting as well. Now, mm. the look, the look, the look. <laughs> what about the she look? Wore, <laughs> she wore leopards. And, I, and I, I can only think that she was inspired by the first Black Queen of the UK, Vinegar Strokes, the walking in leopard. That's the only thing I can say that she was inspired by. But I love it because it's Tia. Like, this, this is quintessential... Tia going to Primark, going to the supermarket, going to get the dick. Like this is Tia, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And and what I love is what I love about Tia is what what she and what I want people to really remember is what what she what people might think she might lack in with with looks and aesthetic in terms of in terms of high couture fashion. She will absolutely make up for with performance, personality, laughter, singing, all that stuff. So wow. yeah, I want I, I want people to really just not not judge someone just on a first outfit. Do you know what I mean, but I love mm. this. I love that it's camp and it's silly, and she, and she knows that it's silly, and she's having fun with it. And to mm. me, I'm just seeing I'm just seeing Tia Coffee personally. Absolutely. When I <clears throat> when I first saw Tia enter, and then even for the whole first episode. Um, I was magnetically drawn to this queen because I can mm -hmm. absolutely tell that they uh, they can perform the house down. Mm. They are very intelligent. I already got a mm. good sense of that from just some of the things that they were saying. I was like, I'm a family of lawyers. She, she's from a family of lawyers. So she, oh. she, so if you come first, she'll sue you. And she's ready to fight. <laughs> she's ready to fight. Exactly. <laughs> but um, no, I love her, and she comes with, and she also comes with that message of really representing POC women yes. as well and men like you know her yes. drag kind of like mine like it's inspired by the women we know the people we, we grow up with you know it, it really comes from that really strong place so she's very special in that respect in my opinion. Now because you do know Tia pretty well uh there were two things that I'm very curious about uh mm. I heard she's part of a musical trio do you know about this and what is it? So she was actually one of the original Destiny's Child, but, but got, got kicked out. Um, no, uh, that, that, was a, that was a joke. That <laughs> like, was a, literally, that was a joke. I'm like, really? <laughs> Latoya? <or> Latoya? <laughs> <laughs> she looks good. <laughs> she looks well. She looks young. Um, no, so she, she, she's part of a group called the Vixens, um, mm. and they're like, and they're like the the, the, um, the, the they were the Vixens before we even met the Vixen from season eight or nine, whatever season she was on, um, 10, season 10. Um, so yeah, so she's part of a trio called The Vixens um, and they're fun, they're camp, like they're, imagine like three British drag queens talking shite on a microphone and singing, possibly in tune, possibly not in tune, with oh, the odd it. harmony, this is The Vixen. So yeah, um, I'm very much, very much kind of the, 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 the British girl band of drag, <laughs> as it were. So wow, yeah, so, yeah they're really super fun. thrilled. <laughs> I've, uh, and I've performed with them as well. Like we we've done like a, a few gigs together as, as like a four. Um, just like just like Randy, I'm always drunk, going, "All right, okay, I'll do, I'll do that bit, I'll do a bit," and then you know, and it's just fun. So yeah, really good. And then the one other thing that I'd love to just like hear about, because like you said, this is a hilarious life, singing, dancing, camp, kind of a mess queen every now and yeah. then. But <laughs> she said she can't sew. <laughs> tea or coffee can't sew. <laughs> That's it. Do you think That's that do, do you think it'll come up? Well, <laughs> well I guarantee that it's going to be a design challenge. So yeah, I think it will come up. <laughs> oh, it's so and funny. I can't, wait. I can't wait to see the challenge because I know that day when you're like, oh, you're so got to design something. I know the, the, the dread, the dread that runs from your feet to the top of your head, you just go, oh my God. So I can't wait to see what, what she pulls out the bag because I know, <laughs> I know it's gonna be something, <laughs> something, <laughs> it's gonna be something. <laughs>
And then next up, we walking into the workroom and announcing her veganism right off the bat. We have Bimini Bamboulash. Well, Bimini, but is it Goulash or Boulash? I don't know which one. It's just Boulash. I think it's Boulash. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I always thought she was Bimini Boppity Boo. I didn't know. That's I what I thought so too. That's what I thought she was. I was like, oh, she's Bon Goulash, Boulash. Okay. Um, I've worked with Bimini. I actually hired Bimini for, for, for a strip show that I was producing <gasps> called Vin Vinegar's Filthy Animals. And um, and she Ooh. came out. And this, this is actually before she was doing drag, actually. Um, and she came in and, she, and we, we got her a, a strip pole. And she pole danced. And she did it all. And she is so amazing. What's hilarious is, so... What's funny about this queen is, even though you might think, okay, she's a look, she's a look, she's she's sex, she's got an ass, she's got a great ass, I must say, an ass, she's got a great yeah, ass. I can um, tell. She she is hilarious. She is a such a funny stand up comedian as well. Um, and I does she sing? I don't know if she sings. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. Who knows anymore? But like, she's so funny as well as being a great look and a great model and a great dancer and flexible and that kind of stuff. So she's so she really is a bit of a bit of a total package really for what for what she can offer to to a stage because mm -hmm. she's more she, she's more than just someone who can you know. Do do a handstand and, and do the splits because she's actually very funny and she's got that really kind of endearing personality. I love Bimini. I, I I've always been a massive fan. Um, and it's nice to see her drink because she's only been doing drag a, like a year or so, like a really short yeah. time. Yeah, a really short time. But she but she's skinny, so so she can wear you know <laughs> pieces of fabric and get away with it, um, bitch. But um, no, I really I really <laughs> like her. And what I like is I think she brings something a little bit different to British drag. I think drag and all you know, can be whatever, but for British drag, this is this I think this is slightly different to what we're what we're used to seeing. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't feel too Americanized to me. It doesn't feel too British. It feels very unique to her, which I think is really exciting. So yeah, it I'm does exactly me. exactly what you just said. It feels unique to her because like even though like this entrance look like right here, it's giving me kind of like Barbarella, uh, yeah, you know, sex kitten, <laughs> but not sex doll, you know. sex doll, a Barbarella sex doll. She's 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 gonna open up every hole any minute. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and boom. Have you go. <laughs> Some of the things that she mentioned in the Meet the Queens, uh, she describes herself as the bendiest bitch. Uh, she mentions the reason she loves doing drag is because of the diversity in drag and getting to yeah. explore things. Um, I think I think they're absolutely incredible. I had no idea that they were a pole dancer. I'm excited to see that. Oh, babe, she is a pole dancer. She's brilliant. Like she's so good. Um, and she's and also she she's non-binary as well. And what I really like mm. about this season is I think there's about two or three, maybe four non-binary contestants. And what's nice about this is. Um, we're now bringing this this, this new conversation on, on in, into people's homes now because still you know I'm I'm of an age when non-binary was wasn't even a phrase you would even hear like and I've I've only really heard that phrase over the last couple of years really so it's taken Absolutely. me a bit of time to to understand what does that look like and it, it turns out it looks like nothing it could could be anything so mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be nice to have someone who is not only going to say I'm a vegan but she's also non-binary and I think it's going to open up a really nice conversation um for the for the viewers i absolutely agree and i'm i'm thrilled that uh we get to see more from them as well yeah, now we have though. walking in fancy a slice miss jenny lemon i just want to give jenny lemon a massive round of applause fuck me jenny lemon is <laughs> phenomenal I've worked with Ginny a couple of times as well. Um, and this is Ginny. Like, actually, <laughs> this, 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 this is very classy. This look here is very classy for Ginny Lemon. Normally, she'll come in a blazer and, you know, hairy chest out, tits out, um, you know, probably pissed. And she's oh, she's brilliant. Um, what I love about Ginny is, is that she doesn't give a shit about trying to conform to being a Rue girl, to being a, a drag race girl. She's coming in to be herself. A lot of people compare it to Bag of Chips. I actually think that she's she, she's a level from Bag of Chips in terms of this is a this is a this is a this is a creature as opposed yeah. to you know a, a, a person who's just walking around whatever having a fag. She's literally like a, a creature of of the day, night, the afternoon, um, and she wants to know if you fancy a slice. And she's brilliant, <laughs> so so great on stage, manic 
crazy. You don't know what the hell she's she's talking about, but it's hilarious. Um, so I I'm a big I've, I mean always have been a big Jenny Lemon supporter and fan, hundred percent. They described uh, when they walked in. They said they are a glamanana, definitely a pig in a wig. Uh, yeah. And this is one of the contestants where you mentioned non-binary, and they do identify mm. as that as well. Yeah. I'm so happy to see that conversation, like you said, still coming up. What mm. I can tell about this artist is um, they think fast, I'm like on their feet. I yeah. sense incredible improv from her. Um, Absolutely. I'm excited Absolutely. to see. Yeah, and what's not, and what I think what what you're getting with Ginny is well, you're you're also getting a kind of legacy um, mm. of, I, I, I mean, a legacy of, of influence from really really great British comedy. You know, Monty Python, li, you know, League of Gentlemen, uh, yes. French and Saunders. You know, you're, you're you're literally getting British comedy and what that kind of turns into in Ginny Lemon, um, mm -hmm. and it just kind of pours out of her. So she's, I, honestly, I love her so much. I'm such a big fan, um, and she's a right laugh. And what's, what's hilarious is, if, if, if you have a drink with her, you're, you're, you're dead. You're going to be <laughs> on the floor. So yeah, she's great. Now I wonder, uh, how long has this fancy a slice been a thing? Because she walked in with the necklace on already. <laughs> oh, babe, that's been a thing since she's that fancy a slice. Like that's been a <laughs> thing forever. Like I think, I think when I met her, I said, "Hi, I'm Vinica Strokes," and she just said to me, "Fancy a slice." I'm like, "Oh, oh absolutely, my. absolutely." <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, she's great. She's great, and and their boyfriend is also gorgeous as well. Or that, or that they are they friends. That's what I call them now. They friends. Gorgeous partners. Amazing as well. So yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited. Uh, they definitely, I can understand why people are drawing that comparison with Baga, but uh, I can absolutely tell that this person is their own lane and yeah, can't wait absolutely. to see what they do on the show. Yeah, oh my God. I'm only getting my tickets for a Gene Lemon show, 100%, can't wait. Walking in next, we have the very tall, Miss Ellie Diamond. Ellie Diamond. Um, From Dundee. Okay, so from D Dundee, oh, she's from Dundee in Scotland. Oh, I think I feel like Dundee is very much like a, like a Mrs. Doubtfire accent. I think I've not, mm. I've not, I've not been to Dundee yet, but like I feel like that's the accent. Um, so uh, funny story actually, me mm -hmm. and Ellie actually got chatting on Grinder um, during during uh, London DragCon. She, I, <laughs> I, I said, I sent a message saying. Babe, I came out on the show and she was like, um, just so you know, uh, we actually spoke on Grindr um, like last year. And I was like, oh my oh. God, okay, what, 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 what was what the conversation? I, <laughs> what did I say and were there any pics exchanged? She's like, no, no, there, there, there were no pics, but you did tell me that you, that you were having an um, enjoyable time with your um, hand. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> That sounds like I tried to be as PC as possible. I'm so sorry. Oh, you can Just talk about whatever you want. It's two okay. gays watch. Sometimes we watch porn. Fab okay, well, tell you what, I'll say it, I'll say it as an American. I was jerking off. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I'd never actually had heard of, of Eddie Diamond until until the show was announced. Obviously, we had chatted on Grinder, but never actually heard of her. And oh my God, I wish I had. This one is. I'm sorry, incredible. I see yeah. her as like kind of like the blue hydrangea of the group. Very sweet, fantastic makeup artist, great costumes. And yes. um, so I'm excited to see what, what she's like as a performer. But my God, like this look is so, so she made it herself. Jesus I Christ. I know. Incredible. Um, what I love about her is she's just so sweet and so cute. And again, I can tell that she is so excited to be there. And I feel like this is like, you know how like when Trixie Mattel walked in and like yes. certain queens walk in and you go, I want to draw wow. her. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I want like I feel like there's a lot of people like, I want to draw this queen because she's she's like a cartoon and she's I just think she's stunning. So I'm a big fan of Eddie Diamond. She really, she really brought it this first episode. 100%. I absolutely agree. And uh, one of the things that I remember so, so much from the episode is the fact that they do make everything head to toe. They said everything except the shoes, I do believe, was uh, an original uh, thing. And then Lawrence Cheney even mentioned uh, having some wigs done by uh, Ellie at different points. Mm, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely excited to get to watch this queen uh, create.
Yeah, I think I think she's I think she she's got a lot to offer. She's, she's gonna bring a lot. And like I said, you know, there's there's certain queens who walk in, like you say, your Trixie Mattel, who you look at and go, mm-hmm. I need to draw you. You are something to draw and to be like to muse over. So yeah, she's great. I love her. She's great. And so very tall. Like that I keep wrapping my mind around the fact that they're like, they're six foot four. That's a just a large lady. She's six foot four? Six foot four. I'd like to wrap my legs around her now. <laughs> now I'm hearing that. Yeah, giant. She, I mean, she, she's, she's so young, but... Who so very talented. Yeah, Let's absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. And right after Ellie, we have walking in Miss Sister Sister. Yay! Sister Sister. Wow. Sister. I- I know, I know sister, sister, we, we used to work in the same bar together. I even, I, I even, um, I even judged her in, a, in like a, in like a drag competition once as well. So that, that was quite fun. Um, she's great. I mean, um, do I, was I bowled over by the, by his overall look? No, I wasn't, but I love... I love that it's very much her. And, and the more I see it, the more I like bits and pieces of it. But it's very her. It's very kooky, very strange. Um, I still have no idea what the blue circle is. Like, uh, like I asked Neither her Neither do she, she, I. Well, I, cause I did ask her once and she went, ah, oh, and I was like, okay, you're pissed. I won't ask you again because you're just drunk. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I like, I love her sense of humor. Every time I've seen her perform, um, again, I mean, she says it, it's very dry, witty, witty scouse sense of humor so i get where she's coming from mm-hmm. um but yeah i but again she's one of those ones where she could be like a one who kind of flies under the radar quite a mm. bit until mm-hmm. and until her kind of moment comes to really shine or really flounder either way but um but you know and, and that's from the first impression do you know what i mean you Absolutely. never know until you see, see, see some love but i feel like she's gonna fly under the radar a little bit well, let's see. With this entrance look, there were a couple things that I noticed. First of all, yes, this glitter moment around the um, around the mouth, it's repeated on the bag because they walked in with the bag in front of them. Yeah, and that's her thing. That, that is her thing. She, she, she's been doing that for years. So that, that, that's, that's, that's nothing new to see. I just, the I mouth? just still don't know what it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she's been doing that for years. Like that that was her like when she first started. That's that's, that's all she would do. I, I I don't think I ever saw her without that until she's on Drag Race. Personally, it's um, like do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh somebody just. <laughs> I mean, maybe I this just, isn't good. Reminds me of somebody like huffing paint like from a bag. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like or she's just, getting or high just, on her own supply and doing drag. Destroy- Oh, if you have you ever seen those those urinals, those urinals, which like mm-hmm. the big mouth, the big lips? Yes, yes. I think it could be that, or just a big glory hole. If we're just gonna <laughs> go there, <laughs> <laughs> listeners, take your pick: glory hole or a toilet. Which one? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I am really excited because it looks like they have a very unique perspective, and yes. they're always gonna put their own twist on it. I can absolutely tell. Yeah, you. even though even though I don't put I don't personally love this look um a hundred percent i still get that it's her and i appreciate what she's done i I mean that sleeve is gorgeous um again i like pieces i just don't for me it's just not something i would put together in one go but hey you know this is this is drag and you do whatever you want to do so yeah love it and speaking not judging their drag but just looking at this photo right here once they went to the confessional I immediately was just like, he's a cutie. I, I think he's, oh, he's so fit. Oh my god! I mean, this is a fit season. It, this this is RuPaul's yes. twink. This is RuPaul's twink race. Oh my god! Which one? <laughs> they are which also one is the, cute. There's some cute ones, yeah. So I would, I would definitely put my um. Wait, wait. Let's not go there. But I would definitely touch sister, sister. <laughs> um, with with consent, I would touch sister, sister. Consent is very sexy. Yes, <laughs> so sexy. Up next, oh, we is, have walking in Taste. Fuck it, oh, here she goes. So wow. when I knew that Taste was going to be on, on this season already, because Taste is Taste is a big deal in London. Like everybody knows Taste. If you haven't met, Taste, oh, I can you've tell. Taste, Jeremy. Everyone knows Taste, and she's she's that kind of girl who has got 
her personality is so infectious and so um, and so charming and whatnot. You can't help but just like her. You just can't help help it. I feel like she is a cross between Valentina and Adore Delano. Okay, so mm-hmm. she's def- she's definitely a star. Like she's a star. She's a star. She's a star. For me, she'll be the one who will break. Who will be the breakout star from this season? There's always one, and I feel like t- Taste will definitely be the one who is the breakout star from this season. Um, what I do think though is that she can re- she can kind of rest on just being Taste. Do you know I what I mean? Which, totally which, see that. Which I think, which I think on the scene is great. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. That will work. That will make her a lot of money. That will buy her a house one day, I'm sure, and whatnot. That's great. But I think when it comes to drag race, you do have to, especially the level where it's at now, you know, we're, we're at season 100 of the whole franchise in, in a way, <laughs> you do kind of need to push yourself and be like, okay, I'm going to really push myself out of my comfort zone for this particular moment of this TV show. But let's go back to the look. This jacket is everything I want yeah. in my life. I want to live Me in too. it. I, I, I will move out and live in this coat. I don't mind. Um, typical taste. The, the, the weave flicks everywhere. Um, she'll, she'll, she'll do a slut drop. Do you know what I mean? It, she's, she's doing taste and it works. Do you know what I mean? So I'm absolutely. So, I'm so happy to see her on. She's fucking great. I've worked with her loads of times. I'm so, I'm so glad that she's on. She, she's a dream boat. Um, I'm, just, I'm just curious to see how she gets on through, through this um, and where she places because I know what she's, I know, I know that she can kind of, again, rest on taste, you know, mm-hmm, when actually mm-hmm. she needs to push some bit more. So. Yeah, I absolutely. Uh, what I'm hearing is I, we're, it's going to be very interesting to see the versatility here. Um, I'm, I'm sure they can do it. It's just going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see them do their taste on it. Now, yeah. something that they said is they described themselves as like a model and they kept saying specifically Corella DeVille was a huge inspiration. And I see we're getting that in the blocking right here with the colors. Yeah. But they said villain and sweetheart. So it's like, which is it? Where does it lean more? Is she more villainous or is she more of the sweetheart? What do you think? I'd say, more, I'd say sweetheart. Absolutely sweetheart. I think I think she wants to look like a villain and that mm. bad bitch from like, you know, she wants to look like Gabriella Union in like Bad Boys or like whatever. Like she wants to look like the bad black bitch out of all those films and whatnot. But she's Absolutely. actually a sweetheart. She she's such she's she's actually a really nice girl. So um yeah I get I get what she's trying to say but I feel like you know she's she's more sweetheart than villain you know she, she, she's not got it in there I don't think. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense because she mm. kept bringing it up, and I was like, "But you don't seem mean. <laughs> like no, you just, no. you just painted <laughs> you that see, way. <laughs> you seem very happy to be here." <laughs> Absolutely. And so, then yeah, after Chase, we have walking in Joe Black, who's ready for that give, close up. I'm giving Joe Black another round of applause. Joe Black is a legend in the UK, in Brighton. I've, I've worked Not even just Joe. the UK, the world. I knew Joe Black for years as well. Really? Oh, come oh, yeah. oh, brilliant then. So uh, Joe Black, I, I've worked with a couple of times. Um, she also came, came to my hotel my hotel room once when I was on tour and me me had a whole bunch of other like queens and gays and whatnot. We were all just literally hammered in my hotel room and they were like, get out of the hotel. Uh, so that was a fun story. Anyway. Joe Black is wow. a legend. I yeah. am so obsessed with this whole look. I, I mean, I love Sunset Boulevard, Glenn Close, Black and stuff. Um, you know, so this is just like a, a musical theater of gay boys, dream come true, cabaret, all that kind yeah. of stuff. And, you know, Joe Black, again, does Joe Black really well. But Joe Black, for me, is a comedian. Unlike someone like Taste, who who can do Taste really well, Joe mm-hmm. Black can do, can do versions of Joe Black um, really well, and that to me is a really strong, strong contender for this competition because yeah. not not only are you, are you getting the core essence of who this artist, who this person is, you're also getting variations of what of what Joe Black um, could be. It's a bit like Sharon Needles, you know. Sharon Needles yes. is very much a a, a comedian of like, it, it, if she's dressed as a as a zombie, a witch, or a sailor, you still get that it's Sharon Needles, you know. One hundred percent. So yeah, like Joe Black is is so great. Like one legit one of my favorites. And I must say, like when I found out she was on, I was so excited. So Same. excited. 
Absolutely. This is somebody who I'm banking a lot of money on because they have been working it so hard. And now that they have this kind of platform to even launch further, I'm just thrilled to see what they're going to do. I think that yeah. they walked in with my personal favorite entrance look because the yeah. branding was so strong. The second yeah. they walked in and they go, I know what you're thinking. God, Glenn Close looks rough. Like, yeah. It, sold me everything exactly like you said it was a musical theater yeah. gay boy moment uh, yeah like, and there's and there's actually a picture of of joe out of drag stood with glenn close they're twins they're not they're, they're not even like they're not even like mother and son or like they're twins. <laughs> same age <laughs> same <everything. laughs> <laughs> that is so funny um yeah just one of my absolute favorite looks and yeah it's so funny that you brought up sharon needles because uh, no queens are the other queens but that's who they did give me in terms of visual it's so yeah. strong on their visuals that it yeah painted a lot like sharon to me but then knowing joe's history as a cabaret a burlesque performer a live performer honestly mm. it reminded me of like sharon with like, I don't know, the skill set of Jinx Monsoon. And yeah, so like- with, 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 with a little peppering of, of Bianca Del Rio in there as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 there are certain- It's good drag. That, <laughs> it's, just, it's just great drag, it's polished drag. And that's the thing, it's polished and, it, mm -hmm. and it's polished. And a lot of people think, oh, polished mean, means I need to look like the Vivian or I need to look like Valentina. No, 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 polished is what your drag is and you've taken it to that next level for whatever story, whatever character, whatever, whatever creation you're bringing. So, that, so that's it. So she's polished to fuck, I, I love her, love her. Absolutely. And again, just reiterating, this is the best entrance look by far, in my opinion. Yes. Holy crap. It looks yes. expensive. Yes. <laughs> and Absolutely. right after uh, another vision in green, but not in green, Miss Veronica <laughs> Green walks in. <laughs> my, now, okay, let's talk. Veronica Green, I this has been my best, legit, best, best, bestest friends for 10 years, it'll be 11 years in March that we've known each other. Um, oh. Ver Veronica is my bestest friend. I keep calling her Kevin, so I keep forgetting. Oh shit, you do drag as well. So yeah, sorry Kev. Uh, so yeah, Veronica Green is my, is legit my best friend. I know her journey from when she started up until now. And every time I see her, even looking at her now, I'm like, I'm so proud of her for getting for getting to this stage in her career because I know that she's been she's had knock back after knock back after knock back and all she's wanting to do is to do drag that's, that's all she wanted to do and and to turn it into something that she can she can make make her life out of and that kind of stuff so I'm finally happy that she can kind of finally show herself to the world and what I love is that she comes in and she's she's wearing this dress here which I know for a fact that she, her, that I think her and her mum made together. Um, and so, so 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 it's a family business. Her first name is her sister's name. So, so there's actually a Veronica in the family. Oh my um, god. Her brother, her brother does drag as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's it's like it's like a family affair. Do you know what I mean? And her dad wears wears knickers and and, and hosieries uh, to, to the supermarket. So it's a family business. I'm so obsessed. Business. Yeah, so so with Veronica. Um, I think people just need to realize that Veronica Green is musical theater through and through. She can sing. She's mm -hmm. got a fucking amazing voice. We met, um, cause we did Joseph and the amazing technical dream coat together on tour in the UK. So that's how we met. Who, and who I, did each of you, and, who, who were each of you in that one? I love that so show. Kevin slash Veronica played um, Benjamin, who was the younger brother, and yeah. I played the black. And I I, I played the black one. Um, and basically, <laughs> I basically. Um, oh my god, Kevin! Kevin, look. Do you remember the Matrix? Remember Neo in the Matrix? Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's that's how Veronica used to look. Long, thin hair, like really kind of like scraggy looking. And I was like, <laughs> you are. You're gross. I need to. I need to fix her up. So I took. I took him out. I, I. I made him get a haircut. Um. We went. We went shopping for new clothes. And I've never seen this person just kind of like go from like a dark soul into like this kind of bright and bubbly person. So for me, it's not even just the drag. I've just seen the boy also evolve over the last decade as well. Wow. And that's why, like, every time I see, him, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so freaking proud of you. You're so amazing. Um. So yeah. So she's come a long way. She she taught herself how to sew. She is a seamstress through and through. Um, 
And yeah, she's just amazing. She reminds me of Courtney Act as well. I've always said this, like she, she, she's literally got a Courtney yes. Act kind of vibe, um, where she goes to this kind of like very pretty, um, pretty girl, like a real, like a real girl kind of thing, you know. Well, something she mentioned is uh, because of the musical theater background. She said she's been auditioning for Wicked for years, you know, trying to get that Elphaba or that Glinda part. Um, and you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I always say to her. You might play Glinda, but you'll be playing her dresser or her cleaner. Um, but, no, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but no, she has, you know, she, she's been she's been auditioning for things so many years, and again, like I said, not back off, not back, which is which is which is the game of musical theatre. You know, you go in and you know you're not you're not guaranteed the, the job. Um, but the good thing about Veronica is, you know, she she always bounces back and she finds something else to to bring her back and drags into something which has been kind of boiling away and it was so weird because when when I was having my my success with um with the West End and and doing um and doing drag race and on that whole year of going crazy what's interesting is is that you know we we started drag at the same time and I definitely felt myself kind of being pulled away from her because even though we started at the same time I was then doing West End and then doing drag race and all these amazing things are happening and I always longed for just someone just to give her a break. Give her a mm. break because she's great. She's really yeah. good. She's got the goods. And now she has. So I'm just over the moon that she's that we can now kind of share share this, this experience together. Cause it just it just makes it better, I think. Especially yeah. um, especially if you're not like a, a Vivian and bag of chips where you're already like best mates. I hope to see my my friends on here and you know celebrate with them. So yeah, Absolutely. she's amazing. And she's Absolutely. a dark horse. She's a dark horse. Um, she will, I'm speaking so much about Veronica, but I'm just so like, ah! Um, she's a dark horse. She'll definitely bring a lot to the competition looks-wise as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, she's got a mouth on her as well. Oh my oh. God. If, oh, if there's if there's some drama, she'll be like, she'll, she'll, she'll either stir the pot a little bit and feed someone a little bit of the of the of the casserole mm-hmm. <laughs> and you'll just smack and watch <laughs> so she's a stirrer for sure <laughs> it sounds just it sounds uh it sounds a lot more like courtney now <laughs> that you're yeah. saying that <laughs> yeah 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 and it's so funny because because I, I worked with courtney um recently on the show um, and I which said to her, was oh, that yeah. death drop the death dragon the christery yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said to her, babe, um, your twin sister's on, on the show. And she was like, who's who, who's my twin? And I went, oh, it's Veronica Green. I've never heard of her. I was like, well, no one ever has. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, it's true. No one's heard of her um, yeah. until now. And, um, mm-hmm. and she was like, okay, we'll see. And then she walked in. I was like, she literally looks like caught the act. Like hilariously. So, uh-huh. um, so from Gollum to Gorgeous, that, that's, that's what I call her. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm going to tell her you said it. <laughs> I'll tell you. Tell her, tell her. She knows. <laughs> All right. And so, oh, and also just adorable. I'm just so excited. After everything that you have just shared with us about Veronica, I'm so excited to see Ronnie more. In yeah. walks Estina Mandela. Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Estina. What do we think here? Oh, I, I hate the outfit, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't love it. I, I, again, I feel like I feel like I feel like the the outfit is good, but mm-hmm. it just could have been up. I want a rhinestone. I want some bling on there. I want to see too. her. I want to just see her shine. I think gray is a very choice fabric to wear. I wore gray on the show, and even though I thought, oh, this is great for the Bond girl. Actually, looking at, it, I was like, "Oh, it's really dull looking on fuming." Um, but what she has mm-hmm. got in her favor, fuck me, this girl is a dancer. Again, I, I worked with her as well. Um, she, oh my god, she's—I think she could be one, one, one of the best dancers that Drag Race has seen. Like Barce, really? Barce Laganja, who who was uh-huh. very technical. Um, Athena's got like a next level style of dancing because, as she says, you know, she's a her her art is her dance. So when when you hear that, you're like, oh, okay, cool. So you must not know, know some know some moves that we we can't even spell. Um, but <laughs> I don't I don't like this outfit. Um, I just want it to be a bit more bling, a bit more bit more bling to it. I love I love what it does. I love the floatiness. I wish the jacket was lined or something, maybe. Yeah, literally, um, that's exactly what I was thinking. If if even if it were just lined with a different fabric, just to punch it up in some sort of way yeah, it would be better something needs a something needs a stone maybe the boots or the arms or the jacket it just needs something needs, or, or the pussy something needs mm-hmm. a stone um mm-hmm. but 
but what but her saving grace is she, she she's got that face like yeah. that face is stunning and i never actually realized how gorgeous she was until i saw her this i was like oh oh shit you're gorgeous um so yeah so that's great what i yeah so Estina's is Estina's is a great performer um and she's great at kind of being that kind of banshee east london kind of girl um mm-hmm. i just just knowing what i've seen her in before on, on different gigs and stuff i just wonder if if her looks will let her down in the long run because mm. um mm-hmm. because even because even though okay so if if we compare maybe her, her and tia yeah sure T, tia's look might not be it might well for the ones that we might see they might not be elevated to the point of being a look queen but she mm-hmm. sells she sells the yes. fun and the comedy whereas astina will sell the kind of sexy side of it and i always wonder mm, is that gonna is that gonna carry you through a competition like this if you're going to be giving outfits on this level you know there's yeah. not 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 saying they're bad outfit it's just that the level is going to be very you know off the rack ready to wear yeah. um kind of stuff which is fine um it's just how are you going to how you going to carry that through so yeah, yeah. And, and how is it going to elevate over the story of of the series you know how is it going yeah to absolutely continue absolutely. to and- grow Mm-hmm. Yeah, and do, and does your personality, um, you know, is is that even big enough to make the costume become big enough? You know, so mm-hmm. yeah, so we'll mm-hmm. see. I mean, I'm I'm interested to see. Interested to see. I am too. I they are like you said, stunning in the face, unbelievably stunning. beautiful. I can't um, believe that's a man. I can't believe it. She's gorgeous. I know. And I know we're not going to go too far into the episode beyond like the entrance looks, but I do have to give just a special shout out. Astina did for the icons runway. They did the Naomi Campbell, and um, oh my, they God. served it. That was that was my favorite that, of the icon looks by far because they so truly great. embodied Naomi. I was yes. like, yes, yeah, I agree one hundred percent. And out of the two Naomi's, because you, know, you have to compare yeah. taste and hers. You do. I get, this is. I go back to what I said. I didn't see Naomi Campbell. I saw Tace and I saw Naomi mm. Campbell with, with Estina. And that's the A hundred. A hundred. I agree. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so it'll just be great to see what develops. Uh, I just, yeah. what a gorgeous queen. Can't wait to see a lip sync eventually. Yes. If, yes. if and when. If, <laughs> if and when it when. happens. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Our final queen to walk in the workroom is a horror. Oh my god! I mean, first of all, blasphemy for making Dorothy look like this—a slut, <laughs> like a slut, <laughs> a Kansas slut. I love it. Um, this is great. I mean, you know, it's it's a great look. It's you 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 know what it is straight away. Oh yeah, um, and it and it is fun. I don't know a horror. Um, you know, this again, it's the first time I've, I've ever heard of her. Um, but you know, it's cool. I would have enjoyed, I mean, I can't even tell if the boots are even right. Are the boots rhinestoned? I can't tell. No, um, I don't think they are. They don't look uh, like it. See, this is if they're not, then that's a detail that, that you need to have. You, if you're gonna do Dorothy, the, the red the red shoes, they need to be the bleeding mm, stone. You're right, this whole thing stone the hell out of it and you need to clap those heels together. Do you know what I mean? There's no place like mm. homo. Um, that's so true. But yeah, it's it's a cool outfit i uh, uh, i would prefer that she came as dorothy <laughs> like i'm an old fuddy duddy i want i want the dress i want a real dog and i want three bears to come afterwards one as a tin man <laughs> the lion and the scarecrow yeah. um but it's cool it's very her you know i i can tell i can tell she's probably like 19 20 lovely um did i yeah yeah yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, something that they described themselves as was a filler queen. And we're not talking about like just floating in the middle. We're talking about she's had it done with the Botox, the cheekbones, the jawline. Uh, she's coming in like it's an all-star season already in terms of, um, I don't know, injectables in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, she she's quite severe in the look and what a perspective because again to take something classic like Dorothy and this is how you're going to serve it up um well she's living yeah. up to her name <laughs> yeah oh, Jorge I don't know I don't know it's as much as much as I think yeah sure it's cool that like, I, I totally get the outfit and I and I and I get the I get the reference of course I get the reference um mm-hmm. for me I, I I think it's 
blasphemy to, to mm. do that to Dorothy of all the people. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? And I, I don't know. I feel like, is it a bit too like, you know when your favorite white girlfriend just goes, I'm gonna be a slutty Dorothy for Halloween. Is that yeah. kind of vibe, do you know what I mean? Mm, um, mm-hmm. and, you, and, and you go to Forever 21 and you grab a flannel thing and a boot and a, and a tight and you, and you pussy out and, you, and you're done. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yes. I completely, completely understand and agree. I'm, when... I'm the worst person to have on these shows because people were like, oh, yeah. Because some people would be like, yeah, I really like it. I'm just like, honest. I'm like, this is how I feel about it as a viewer. No, it's, it's what we need. And, you know, as somebody who, again, you know, paved the way for this season two to even happen, you have all <laughs> the rights to say whatever you would like. And I've paid my TV license. I'm, I'm allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So now that we have seen all the entrance looks sort of spilled a little bit of tea and gossip, um, any sort of final thoughts about this season, the girls, the cast, anything, honestly? Um, it's going to be very much a look heavy season, which is mm. cool. I think you know, um, season one was very much about performance and getting to know kind of us really and kind of what what we do as performers that I feel like there's gonna be a lot of um look heavy challenges mm. um and and also with all the challenges I think all the girls are gonna come looking heavily like looks this is what my look yeah. is for this do you know what I mean that that mm-hmm. I think like that that will be the first ball and everything else will be the secondary for a lot of people um but that's exciting I mean fashion's yeah. great and it's and you know what it's nice to kind of put a focus on that side of that side of drag and that side of art because at the end of the day um you know it's nice to highlight the people who have made costumes for these for these queens to come on the show it's nice to highlight that i think so um yeah i, I think it's gonna be a very fashion heavy look heavy heavy season i also think it's gonna be a lot of bitchiness as well because from what i saw <laughs> woo, i saw some bitchy comments happening so yeah i agree it seems like everybody's um everybody's got a very strong point of view when it comes to their look and like their perspective on what they're going to interpret things as. And I can definitely see that causing conflict whenever they start to share their opinions on Mm -hmm. each other's, you know, interpretations. (laughs) Yeah. And I, and I do think it's a bit shit when someone, this is, this is really quite pointed, but it's when someone says, um, you know, because someone is wearing something, say off the rack, that mm-hmm. uh, th- that is not valid. How do you know what's valid? You know, that va- valid dra- all drags valid doesn't mean all drag is great, but all drag Boom. is valid. Yes. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, that was actually so that- a phrase that I heard very recently: is all drag is valid. It just doesn't mean it's all good. You yeah, know, exactly, like- exactly. And that's not saying anything else than other than that. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> now my question for you vinegar um mm. before we head out i would like to look into our gay crystal ball and mm. we are going to predict uh a top four now again okay. you know spoilers get the heck out of here we don't know nothing about nothing based on the mm. meet the queens and episode one um mm. who 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 do you think is our top four top who are four. contenders um, so for me, the contenders for the top four absolutely are Joe Black. Mm-hmm. Joe? Joe, if, we, if we're just going on Go, 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 Joe. Go, 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 Joe. <laughs> ah, triggers. <laughs> um, if we're just going on fire to meet the Queens and this kind of first entrance moment, for me, it'll be Joe Black, Lawrence mm-hmm. Cheney, um, and, oh, gosh, um probably Eddie Diamond could mm-hmm. be in there. Um and possibly Veronica Green could could snatch it. Um that's just sort of a first impression from Meet the Queens and Entrances. I know obviously one of those is completely wrong, but absolutely, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, you know? because, because because we're talking hindsight, we're, we're, we're in the past right now, now in the future, whatever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we never know what can happen in the future, you know, with never know. anything, you know? Never know, exactly. Nothing set in stone. If anything that we've learned this year, uh, everything can change on 
you know, on a the moment's dime. notice. Yep, on, on the dime. dime. Mm -hmm. For me, the people that stood out, it's so interesting because I was just taking in, I was having so much fun with all the meat. The yeah. Kids. I thought they were wonderful. Also, I thought that the the color blocking where they did the pride look sort of thing for the yeah. queens. That was one of my favorite promo things I've ever Wasn't seen. Wasn't it for gorgeous? The series. It Absolutely was. Gorgeous. Yeah, was everyone nice looked is, phenomenal. They definitely got a, a brief because on season one, we didn't get a brief. We were just like, <laughs> turn up in turn up in something. And then we were like, what is this? <laughs> oh, oh, she meet the queens. What? I would never have watched if I knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, this is what people are going to know? <laughs> like, oh. This is... This is my pajamas, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I had the same four people stand out to me from the beginning of the episode and the Meet the Queens. I mm. am drawn to these four, and so it's who I'm placing my bets on. Tia Coffey is one yep. of them. There's just something so unique to what they're yeah. doing, and it just seems yeah. so much fun that I want to be involved. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, Lawrence Cheney as well. Yes. Um, Maybe it's because they were the first one in, or maybe it was the accent. I can't tell, but it's yeah. just, I'm obsessed. Yeah. Uh, Ellie Diamond, I also agree with you there. This queen, I mean, if they can head to toe do these looks like that at 21, yeah. watch out. That's competition for anybody, and I don't care who yeah. you are. And then, you know, Estina Mandela. And one of the large reasons for Estina for me is I love the confidence. I love that ease. Um, and it really does, once they did that runway look as Naomi, I just, I was like, okay, yeah. there's something here that is, I want to see more. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're pretty, I mean, who do I pick? Veronica uh, and who, who Lawrence, who Joe, and Ellie. So almost. Yeah, jo, uh, I mean, we know Joe is, um, you know, uh, by. Alive and um, well. <laughs> alive and well, just not in the building right now. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely I would definitely kind of take out Joe and put on if we're going by what we've now seen. Um for me, oh god, I think for me, Tia, because she's camp and she's got yes. that that cat that just I mean, just for me, I love a camp sticky queen and she's and she's got that in, in spade loads, I think. So I don't know, it's just, it's so interesting because it's such a, such a mix. There's also people who've got similar things going on in terms of what they do um, on stage, which is exciting, you know, exciting to mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. mm. Like you were, like you were mentioning for the series one, what it really felt like was with your group of queens that went on, it was like an education for the world on British drag. It was yeah. so, you know, kind of, Everyone was so different in their own lane, but like an essential part of what makes mm. British drag unique. And now this season, I mean, it's not, I don't even know, the, the fierce, they're crazy looking. I can't yeah. wait to see everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm yeah, so excited it, for this. It's very interesting because it's kind of like, I feel like with our season, you kind of could see the levels of where everyone's at. On this one, it feels like everyone's at a really kind of similar level in terms of, where their drags are. Yeah. Um, so now it's now it's just kind of down to um, you know, what happens in, in the moment, what happens on the day. But also on top of that, there's two extra queens in this season, okay? So what I always think is when there's when you start off a season with 10 queens, you've kind of got no room to kind of just float under the radar slightly. I mean, if, if you look at like C C Cameron Michaels on yeah. her season. She yeah. floated through through to top four purely because there was there were what sixteen queens on that season. So the more know. queens they are, you, you you could literally float float your way through. Just be good until, until you have to like show that you're amazing. So I feel like for the first couple of episodes on this one, there's a couple of queens that could definitely just float through and kind of get to certain stages, and then bang, then we'll see their kind of downfall or their or their rise to rise to grace. Um, as and when so yeah it's gonna be an interesting season for sure yeah and thank you uh so much for like coming and joining the podcast for today and like giving your very loved it. perspective it has been i mean a freaking treat i have been a huge fan of yours since last year um oh thank for you. you huge uh you know the thing that broke my heart out of your thing the most was you didn't get to do that runway look that was the subway 
Um, oh, the Victoria that, line, I know, I know. I, w- I would have been safe. <laughs> yeah, you would have been top. Like, that thing top, sure. was so good. It was epic. Yeah, yeah exactly. it was absolutely epic. Well, hey, um, you know, it's all good. You never know what could happen. You never yep. know. You know, I, I, I could be back in season three cleaning the toilets. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, as long as I'm on TV and the check clears. Yeah, exactly. Now, before I let you go, absolutely, uh, I just have a couple of questions just for you. Uh, in terms mm. of drag, what is it that you've been creating, working on? Do you have anything you'd like to promote? Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, oh my God, it's just been amazing since actually leaving the show, just to be able to work on, work, just work on Vinegar and getting her kind of to, to the level that I really wanted to what we want to get her at and kind of get into the next stage so uh, yeah i've been working on my first what one woman show which um which i'm kind of writing at the moment at the moment so i'm hoping to get on tour hopefully a little bit this year and obviously next year when kind of covid's kind of gone hopefully fingers crossed i can kind of get out of there properly and come over to america as well and do some shows out there um i've got a band now called Vin- vinegar strokes and the morning afters um and nice. we've got We've got three tracks on Spotify and on iTunes now. So go check that out and give it a stream, give it a listen. It's all covers and it's all like fun, like, you know, uh, B52 style stuff and whatnot. So it's really fun. Uh, what else? Oh my God. Um, Death Drop sh- should be coming back soon to London. Thank God. And, and hopefully on tour as well, fingers crossed. Um, and yeah, it's that really. And so, to other bits, I've got my, got my TikTok happening as well. So yeah, I'm kind of working on bits and pieces online. I'm going over to Denmark as well uh, this year to, nice. to work on to work on an opera. I'm, I'm the first drag queen to work at the Royal Danish Opera as well. So that's wow. really fucking huge. Yeah. Congratulations. So gonna, thank you. Yeah, so, uh, that's a huge, huge gig, which I can't wait for. So yeah, I'm just kind of got lots of bits kind of coming up. It's just kind of as and when I can leave the house and get yep. out there and whatnot. So yeah, but I'll be online. You can, you can catch me online and you know social media and that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I'll be doing bits. Yeah. And then, is there any advice lo- looking back on the last year since you were on Drag Race yourself, and then looking to where you are now? Mm. Um, is there any advice that you would give yourself or the queens who are experiencing this for the first time for season two? Um, the, the one thing I always say to people and myself is it's not what you do on the show. It's what you do afterwards, which is, mm. which is the main thing. That's the real race, you know, yeah, it is. Um, try, trying to navigate and create a, uh, a, a business and a brand out of what out of what you've just created on a TV show. So you know wh- whether you come first or you win the show or wherever. Um, you know I think we we know the queens ha- who have not won Drag Race America but are the biggest stars from the show. Shangela, Vanji, Katia, uh, you know, Tr- Trixie didn't didn't even come close to winning her first season. You know um, yeah. I think the the work you put in afterwards is is the race. Um, always work on yourself. You. you you know, I think when you come out of Drag Race, you know exactly what you want, want to work on. For me, it was more just about kind of makeup and looks. I already, I already had the performance down and what I wanted to do with that. It was just kind of like, what, what, what am I going to wear today? How, how, am I, how am I looking these days? And you, you, you know what to work on. So, you know, put in the work afterwards because that's where the race is. And, mm-hmm. you know, one, once the next batch of girls come out, you know, you're either the person who's going to be lost in the, in the sea of drag queens you know gone and gone and gone yester or whatever um all the ones who are just literally always putting those out there and doing creative stuff and entertaining you know entertain the crowd that's what it is it's about entertaining so yeah get out there absolutely i completely agree and uh i think that's a wonderful place to wrap things up for this episode where we uh just gave our first impressions of the queens and the kind of predictions for uk season two yeah, well, yeah. thank you so much for being here with us vinegar it means the world to me oh uh, thank you for having me i feel so gay and i've just watched <laughs> <laughs> tv i feel great i feel great now, i've got I've gone from top first to straight up power top. So thank you. Yes, that's so good. And that's what we're looking for, power tops. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so Vinegar, just let everybody know what are your social media handles, how they can best follow and keep up with your work. Yes, you can follow me on Instagram at the only Vinegar Strokes and TikTok at 
I became a no. I became a total slag. That's it. I became a, <laughs> it's new. I keep forgetting. I became a total slag. That's it. So, That's yeah. your TikTok. Oh yeah, babe. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. That's phenomenal. Absolutely. So yeah, give us a follow. So yeah. So yeah. So you follow, and obviously Twitter is all the only event that goes. So yeah, follow me or I've got a good old time. So yeah. Oh, and Grinder. I'm on Grinder. So <laughs> worldwide. Um if you need if you need me, call me no matter where you are, no matter how far. Two oh. meters away, please. <laughs> oh my god, I am dying. <laughs> all right, with that, we're gonna say goodbye, good night, and we'll talk to you later. Thank Goodbye, you so much, America. Vinegar. Bye, love. <laughs>